uh, are, are getting more intense. Copper, of course, I've, I've, I've discovered, and this is from my personal experience, I, I have a little thing here I want to show you. Uh, these two pencils would rep represent a light pole, and this rubber band that's there would represent the conductor that carries the, the electricity. Now, I've noticed uh, on one occasion there was a span of copper wire, but the circuit was having a problem. It's called a short circuit. And when there is a short circuit, it induces or increases the amount of uh, voltage or current that flows. Now, under this pressure, I discovered that copper will stretch and it will stretch all the way to the ground. And after the problem is cleared, it will slowly get back right back to its normal tension again. Unlike gold, you put the highest voltage to gold and it's going to remain right where it is. It's not gonna change. And that's a reason for us to look at it tonight and understand the difference between gold and silver to compare to earth and wood. Let's look a little bit more at the scripture. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth and some to honor and some to dishonor. Verse 21, have something comforting for every one of us. But before we go there, I want us to take a little time and look back at verse 20. Gold and silver stands out because of their quality. Wood and earth will change. Vessels of wood, vessels of, of earth, they will melt. They will break easily under pressure. But I discovered, and it is very comforting as I read the scripture, to know that God is not just concerned about the gold and the silver, with all their values and uh, attributes, if we could use that term. But he's also interested in wood and earth. I know tonight that if I should say, listen, I fall in the category of gold and silver, I think I would be lying. But I want to put myself somewhere tonight under the category of wood on earth. And I am not uh, bringing myself down. I'm saying this because I know where I've been. I know where I'm coming from. And I know what the grace of God has done for me. Why I can come tonight to share a passage of scripture with you. And I glorify him every day. I said, thank you, God, for the time when you came my way and rescued me from sin. And you put me on a rock to stand and have put a song in my mouth to sing and a word to share with your people all because of your grace and your mercy. Thank you. He's saying tonight, wood and earth, these are of very little quality and value when you look at that. But tonight, God is saying, I'm interested in that gold as much as I'm interested in the silver vessel, and I'm also interested in the wood and the vessel of earth. 
verse 21, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, which means clean and meet, ready for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. What is the Lord saying to us tonight through this word? He is looking for two things. In any vessel, whether you be in the house or not, if you are sanctified and if you are available, God is saying, I'm ready to use you. A vessel that is clean and a vessel that is available, God is saying, I am ready to use you. Whatever category you fall under, my friends, God is saying, if you can meet these two qualifications, I'm ready for you. And it will amaze you to see what God will do in your life if you will just commit yourself completely to him. If a man therefore will purge himself from these, from what? Some filth of this world, some things that will disqualify you from being ready to be used by God. If a man, therefore, will cleanse himself from these, the writer said, he shall be a vessel that is sanctified and meet for the master's use and ready for every good work. What a God we serve tonight. I take comfort in that when God is ready to assign me an assignment, he is not concerned about my pedigree. He is not looking at how many carrots possessed in it. He is not looking at how valuable in, in, in the sense of uh, monetary uh, value is. He's saying, you're a vessel that is sanctified and clean and ready to be used, and I will use you to do exploit for me. Dear friends, whatever have been your accomplishment over the years, I guarantee you, you can look back at every success and every achievement that you have made, and you can look back at it and say, it is because God has seen something in me and the two reasons are, one, I'm sanctified, and two, I am available. Have God used you? Have he been using you? Are you available? Is he just passing you by and using everybody else? Then we might need to ask ourselves some personal question. One songwriter said, why me, Lord? What, I, what have I ever done to deserve even one of those treasures that I've known? Let's commit ourselves to the Lord in complete surrender and allow him to use us for his glory. Second Timothy chapter 2, 20, I'll read that again. But in a great house, they are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore will purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessel. Treasure is something valuable. God is saying, listen, 
you are valuable in my sight. Not because you have the qualities of gold or the pedigree of wood or silver or earth, but you are a treasure. That's how valuable God sees us. We have this treasure in earthen vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Now we can bounce back to verse 28 of the previous chapter and we can understand why God really chose us so that no flesh should glory in his presence. The ministry belongs to the Lord and it must be done at any cost. What are we doing and how can we maintain ourselves as we commit to the work and to the service of the Lord? Let us remember, dear friends, that our reward is not here and now. When we struggle through the times of life with diseases and sicknesses and challenges of different sort, let us tell ourselves that we're going through this because we are not home as yet. And in this life, there are many trials, many struggles that we have to go through. But God is saying, take courage because my grace is sufficient to keep you. I want to encourage you tonight, hold to God's unchanging hands. Build your hopes and things eternal. Let not things of this pleasure, the, the pleasures of this world get at us and break us down and prevent us from fulfilling the calling of God and our lives. He went up into that mountain and he called unto him whom he would. Notice who he called, the fisherman, the tax collector. Yes, he called the doctor and he called everyone that he see was clean and available. And he said, come follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Tonight, guess what? God is still calling. He's still calling men and women and children of different age group, of different category. And I'm so glad that he's not looking at the color of our skin to call us for a task. He's not looking for the white or the black. He's not looking for any outward show, but he's looking for the clean and the available ones to use for his glory. May the Lord bless you tonight. Will you bow your heads with me in prayer as we seek the Lord? Eternal God and our Father and friend, times and times again you have knocked on our door and you have got our attention. Many times, Lord, we have come to a point in our lives when it seems as if we have become uh, comfortable with you and uh, we find ourselves in a comfort zone where we can look back at our abilities and our achievement to say, this is why the Lord have called me. But we are glad tonight that you have spoken and you have opened our understanding to the truth of your word, that you are not looking at the pedigree, but you are looking at the simple, the low and the humble that is clean and available. One writer said, if you can use anything, Lord, you can surely use me. Lord, the song that went on in our uh, praise and worship time, Lord, whatever you're doing, yes, we know you can do it without us, but don't, Lord. If you can include us in the lease of your work, Father, may we respond tonight to say, here I am, send me. My brothers and sisters, Tonight, I ask that you will commit yourself to the Lord. Allow him to do his work in your life. 
Don't look at the great and mighty, but look at what God has called you to do. Whatever your assignment is, God is able to enable you to fulfill that calling and to have you at the end of your Christian journey to say as Paul, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness that the Lord have reserved. And not just for me only, but for all those who love his appearing. God bless you tonight. It is a pleasure to share with you one more time. And my prayer is that God will continue to speak to us, to restore and to revive us through this time. God bless you. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand praise for the word. Let's just say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank we want you. We want to make yeah. sure that we are available and that we're clean. Amen. When we are available and we are clean, he is able to use us. We thank God for the word. We just thank God for Bishop Jackson for being with us this another day. We really appreciate the word. Thank you. Um, uh, we thank Lady uh, Jackson also for being with us and giving us the opening prayer today. And I want to thank everyone for joining us on our second week Zoom revival. It has indeed been a pleasure to see each of you ready to hear what God has to say to his people in this season. God has blessed us with a rich word from last week, and he is faithful to do the same this week. And we continue to admonish each of us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And again, we thank Bishop Jackson and Lady Jackson from Lifeline Ministries here in Port St. Lucie. Now on tomorrow... On Tuesday, we will be blessed to have evangelist Dr. Bonnie Hill with us. Um, you don't want to miss another great servant of God. So make sure you tune in tomorrow. And continue to pray for all of the speakers and participants in our revival. And if Jayla would put the information up about our giving, um, you see, you know, some of you have gone to Zell and you have made contributions and we do appreciate it. Thank you very much. And we do know that some of you have also mailed in your payments, at, not payments, but mailed in your offering. And we do appreciate you doing that. Um, thank you again for being supporting of our revival spiritually, physically, and financially. With that being said, back into the hands of Lady Johnson. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord.